Hey guys, Box Truck Henry here. Today I'll be doing a voiceover of my video because I actually want to touch on a very important subject that is often overlooked. In the meantime, check out this video. Here I'm installing the flange in the inner part of the door frame so that the gate can roll up at a stop. Um, not a whole lot, just grinding and welding. At the end, I'll talk a little bit more about the flange and the door. So, the reason this topic came about is because uh, somebody had sent me a, a question on the comments uh, regarding RV insurance. They wanted to some advice, which I think that this is actually a very important subject because we often go out and purchase these vehicles to convert and often think about all of the legalities, the registration and insurance at the end of the build. And I think this, this is something that I should address in advance so that we are all aware of the, diff the different aspects that you should consider when choosing a vehicle to convert. So the reason this whole topic came about is because uh, one of the subscribers, Lynn Williams, uh, sent me a question on, on the post regarding advice for insurance for his RV. I guess he's having a hard time getting insurance. And ironically, I happen to be a, in a somewhat similar situation right now. Just recently, my insurance has been canceled due to the fact that originally when I requested my as insurance for my box truck I had told them that it is a box truck that I will be using it for personal use and not for a commercial use so the agent on the phone pretty much just said okay and set me up as just as a regular uh, Ford Econoline van insurance policy but as uh, a few months went by and they sent me a letter to let me know that they canceled my policy due to the fact that my vehicle is actually registered as a commercial vehicle and therefore I need to get commercial insurance. So the lesson here is that not always things are what they seem, um, especially when it comes to dealing with agencies and, and other companies and the services and products that we are requesting for something that these agencies and companies don't really know what it is. You know, it, you might as well bring in a spaceship and tell them that you you want to insure a spaceship, a converted a converted RV kind of falls in that in that category where what is it? Is it commercial? Is it RV? If it's an RV, why does it say commercial? Or if it's uh, commercial, why does it say RV? Or you know, why does it say that it's a a school bus and you're using it as a home? So, you know, a lot of these, there's a lot of gray area and the way these insurance policies uh, create these policies. So we have to kind of take an account for how we are technically set up as far as the vehicle goes and uh, what it is that your intentions are as far as the use of it. I think that it's our responsibility to be informed about what are our options and what route we want to take as far as deciding what to do with our vehicles, how we're going to use our vehicles, and, and even before deciding what type of vehicle to shoes. But hey, uh, many of you should point out that I'm actually a victim of my own preaching. I bought this truck and I was under the impression that I was going to be able to park my commercial vehicle in a commercial neighborhood zone. But that was clearly not the case as you guys can see in my past Ticket Dilemma videos. I was just misinformed um, or I was just under the wrong impression. So as I said, it really is our responsibility to really know everything there is to know about the type of vehicle that you're going to purchase because most likely it's going to be a vehicle that it was previously used in a different manner as opposed to just 
taking an existing RV and just breaking it down and restoring it back to an RV which it's always been an RV as opposed to taking a school bus or even an, an ambulance or a fire truck and turning that into an RV you know there are a lot of gray areas that you need to just be aware of and just kind of research the type of vehicle that you're using it and what type of um, uses you can actually use it for so again do your due diligence do as much research as you can about the vehicle that you're planning to convert call the, all of these agencies in advance and just tell them what your intentions are um, just so that you would know ahead of time um, you know make sure that you're going to be able to have a parking spot for it can you legally park it in the street for how long what areas can you park your vehicle in will you be paying for for storage or, or parking will you be paying on a monthly basis on a yearly basis uh, you know make sure you have all of those numbers already planned out in advance so um, do your due diligence and try to research as much as you can regarding your vehicle that you're trying to convert and just save yourself the headache for something else like what color schemes you're going to use or what kind of wood you're going to use in the interior as opposed to holy crap where am i going to park this vehicle and holy crap i'm not even legally allowed to drive this vehicle do your due diligence save yourself the headache Okay, so here's some actual advice that may be useful to you. And this is just based on my experience. If you can get your vehicle fully insured properly, then you have done everything prior correctly. So these are just some of the steps based on my experience. Um, so again, you still have to do your own due diligence, but if you are satisfied with what you have found out regarding your vehicle and you wanna move forward, uh, one of the first things that you will have to do is go down to your local DMV and request the form for the for the conversion. It's not necessarily called a conversion form. It's uh, most likely going to be called um, something in regards of a construction form or a certificate of construction. Um, and that will also give you a good opportunity to ask questions regarding your intentions of the vehicle that you have purchased and what you want to do with it and get this form or down Load it online and just keep it handy for when you do complete the main components of your RV you can then return already filled out for the inspection so that it can be re-registered as a new type of vehicle which will be a recreational vehicle you cannot re-register it as a converted vehicle until it is completed until the main components are already completed as a new recreational vehicle um, so some of those things are and again these are just based on my experience uh, uh, again I advise everybody to do their own due diligence and please add any additional stuff on the comments all of all of this stuff is going to help everybody else as far as putting together a list of things that we need to do in order to properly convert our vehicle your vehicle will need to meet certain specifications according to the highway patrol and the DMV standards. Some of those things are that you need to have a permanent bed in your in your vehicle. Um, it cannot be a cod or a, just a mattress. You have to have a permanent sleeping area. You need to have a permanent eating area and a permanent bathroom installed in your vehicle. Those are the key components that you have to have in your vehicle um, in order to register it as a recreational vehicle. The other things that you need to have in your vehicle are the fresh water tank and the black and gray water tanks permanently installed and functional in your converted vehicle. The other thing that I'm not sure how legal this is, and this may be from state to state, but a lot of the times the DMV and the highway patrol nowadays are requesting to have seat belts installed in the back area of your of your vehicle. They want to see these seat belts already installed. If you have a bench seat, if you have a sofa seat in the back or a dining area seat, they want to see seat belts on it. And I think that the minimum requirements are just the 
the lap belt and of course if you are able to install shoulder harnesses even better and the requesting is because I'm sure in their experience is that they found that people are getting hurt uh, while riding in the back of these vehicles with no seat belts and possibly even um, fatalities so you know it's really for your own safety and for your passenger safety please implement seat belts in your build as well but again that I don't know if that's uh, one of the requirements um, specified or it may be from state to state another subject that I quickly want to touch on is the gross vehicle weight rating um, and that is also very important but it's a very lengthy subject so we'll save the details for another video when constructing or when converting your vehicle it has a lot to do with registering it which it has a lot to do with the qualifications uh, upon your re-registering during your inspection but it's also very important for the safety of your vehicle and your vehicle's capacity to be able to drive on the road safely so just so you know all vehicles have a maximum load capacity and usually you would find that information on the inside door of your vehicle um, where it tells you the GVWR or the gross vehicle weight rating and if you go beyond that weight your vehicle will not pass inspection for anything you will not even for just regular driving your vehicle cannot surpass that weight that is listed on that vehicle the gross vehicle weight rating is the maximum capacity of the combination of the actual vehicle and all of the stuff that you're going to put in it which includes all of your your cabinets and your sofas all the the windows and doors and all the extra weight that you're going to add to the vehicle have to be taken into an account as to not surpass the gross vehicle weight rating that is posted on your vehicle that is already rated to that vehicle the main reason is for your safety the chassis of your vehicle was built to perform a certain way with a very specific maximum capacity weight anything beyond the weight could increasingly be a hazard for you to drive it will affect the whole driving experience everything between the chassis the axle the brakes the suspension the tires all of those components that actually keep you safe on the road will actually be affected and any of those components can ultimately fail and potentially cause an accident or worse so just as a quick tip look at the gvwr rating of your vehicle's door frame which is a different rating of your gvw which is the gross vehicle weight the the gvw is just a weight of the original state of the vehicle if you're converting it most likely you're going to add more weight to it with the extra stuff that you're going to install in it but the gross vehicle weight is just the original state of the vehicle without any of the cargo or extra stuff so just make sure you don't show up to the DMV for your inspection with your vehicle waiting past your gross vehicle weight rating um, because your vehicle will fail right off the bat and again that's just a whole nother subject there I see these these YouTube videos people converting and just loading up a bunch of weight into their build and all all I see is man you know either a transmission is going to go out trying to haul all of that extra weight or that gas mileage is going to just reduce drastically again I can go on a very long tangent on the importance of keeping your vehicle your conversion very light which you know hopefully I'll touch on that subject on a separate video but please don't show up to the DMV for your inspection with an overloaded vehicle or pass the gross vehicle weight rating So once you install your permanent bed and your eating area and your restroom and all your tanks and you're at the DMV 
requesting a, an inspection for a uh, re-rating of your vehicle to get a new registration. The other things that they may ask you, and which most of the time they, they will, is they're going to request receipts for all of the stuff that you put in there. I don't know why they need receipts, but they're, they usually request receipts for all of these items that you have installed into the vehicle. Like for example, if you installed a toilet in there and if you installed a stove and you installed a mattress or a bed or whatever, they want receipts for all of those, of those things. So remember, have your receipts, save all your receipts along the build because you may need them at the DMV when inspecting your vehicle for a re-rating of your vehicle. So once you have completed your inspection at the DMV or at the Highway Patrol and they're happy with the way that you converted your vehicle and, and they approved it, all you have to do is just take your new registration and just call your insurance and say, hey, now I have an RV. It has been certified by the DMV. My new registration shows that my, my box truck is now considered an RV. Then they will give you an RV insurance. So just getting the proper vehicle insurance or getting your RV vehicle insurance is the, is the whole goal of all of these steps. Um, if you've done all of these steps properly, then you can get the proper insurance and legally drive your vehicle on the road. Because I'm pretty sure once you finish converting your vehicle, you're going to want to drive your vehicle, legally drive your vehicle, or just winging it and risking driving an illegal vehicle everywhere you go. So hopefully these few steps will guide you towards the right direction. So just going back to my own personal dilemma is that as of right now, I do not have a uh, vehicle insurance. Right now I can't really drive my vehicle anywhere. And it's not that I can't get insurance, it's just that the, my insurance company is requiring me to get commercial vehicle insurance because my vehicle right now is registered as a commercial vehicle. So all I have to do is follow the steps and implement those main components that the DMV requires to be able to convert it into an RV. But I'm now faced with the question is, do I want to do that? You know, the whole concept of this build is to make it into a stealth RV. And so if I convert it into an RV and the registration says an RV and I'm parked in the back of some shopping center and, you know, I'm trying to blend in, you know, a cop can potentially run my plates and find out that my registration says it's an RV now it's going to raise a red flag that hey somebody might be sleeping in there so now i'm faced with the with the dilemma where do i register it as a commercial vehicle or do i register it as an rv vehicle well maybe most would say well that's a no-brainer just leave it as a commercial vehicle but the the caveat to that is that commercial vehicle is ridiculously expensive you know as opposed to an rv insurance you know commercial vehicle insurance is a lot a lot more expensive you know as opposed to an rv vehicle where an rv vehicle it's a recreational vehicle the insurance company insures recreational vehicles a lot cheaper than even your regular commuter car and the reason is because they don't expect you to drive your recreational vehicle for personal use or for business use or even to live in they're expecting that your recreational vehicle is going to be used only for recreation um, which would be from time to time and you know they expect that you know you're just a normal person that you know you'll you're you're working and you know every once in a while you'll pull it out of the driveway and drive it occasionally and that's really what a recreational vehicle insurance covers which is seldom use of the recreational vehicle, not as an everyday commuter, as opposed to a commercial vehicle. They ensure that as a vehicle that you're going to be driving every day for work, you're gonna be putting in hundreds of miles in it and going to be putting a lot of use into that vehicle, potentially, you know, over 80, 
80 hours a week because you know maybe that's your job to use the vehicle and so they insure these vehicles a lot differently than they insure recreational vehicles but to go back to my dilemma now i'm faced with the the, the dilemma is that will the commercial registration and the commercial insurance make my kind of diminish my whole goal to, to create my conversion into a stealth rv it'll pretty much make that whole concept obsolete or i don't know maybe not so now i need to quickly decide which direction to go But that's pretty much the situation I was in regarding the sort of the question um, posted on the comments um, by one of the subscribers. And so I really wanted to take my time and, you know, talk about it and just point out all of these important topics that we often overlook. And lastly, the final topic that I want to touch on is, you know, when deciding on what type of vehicle you're going to plan to convert, to just really think about it and just do some deep soul searching because you're really going to be faced with a lot of hurdles, a lot of emotional hurdles. One of those things where you're really going to have to think about and, and really uh, make peace with it because you will encounter a lot of emotional um, hurdles along the way. You know, it's one of those things that you cross a point of no return and you know you have so much invested into it both money and time and just physical sweat and equity into it it's kind of hard to turn back so you really need to do some deep soul searching and understand that there will be a lot of emotional roller coasters and hurdles you know you might even lose a few bolts along the way so it's something that you really need to sit down and contemplate if it's something that you are going to be able or even willing to endure so this was just a brief discussion on the uh, few topics that I want to touch on because I thought they were very important and and I think that they were they're often overlooked so you know it's just one of the things that I kind of wanted to point out and plant that seed on everybody's mind to let you know what to expect before you start your build and if you're going to start it start it right and do your research do your due diligence and just do some deep soul searching and understand that you will encounter some hurdles along the way but the whole process the whole build it's actually very very rewarding and once you have your build up and running and, and fully functional the whole experience um, you know just being able to to use your converted vehicle the way you intended to that in, in itself is very rewarding so you know I encourage everybody to follow your dreams and if, if, it's, if this is something you really want to do and you you've been thinking about it for a while now um, you know just go for it you know just just take the first step and I my advice is anyone who's never done it before is start small you know for if you want to you know start if you want to experience the whole boondocking or the urban camping um, stealth camping start small first you know try it out in your car or try it out in your pickup truck or or, or or even in your box truck with you know just an empty box truck with a with a mattress in the back and and then just try it out see what you how you feel about it and and you know just your your brain will start you know ticking and before you know it uh, you'll just start getting just all bunch of ideas of, of what you do and how to do it and it builds into something uh, very beautiful so you know follow your dreams and go for it if this is something you want to do go for it um, just I uh, just wanted to give you guys some as a little bit of advice based on my experience and hopefully this helps you guys out
but just to give you an idea that it, you know these welds kind of disappear once you put paint on it um, I'm thinking I should have used the white paint but I didn't have white paint I had black paint flanges are done I'm gonna see which kind of gaskets I can use I got silicone rubber and rubber window seal so this one's got a little little texture to it and this one's got like a little a little loop to it although these two say extra well this is large and then this is extra large I think it's more of a large I think the, the gap is like this. I don't think it's as big as this. But I don't know, we'll try this one first. And it doesn't slam shut, it has that little cushion. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but it seems to be making contact right there pretty good. And right here, pretty good. Um, and then all this will be sealed um, through the outside. It's this stuff right here, that's gonna, that hole right there and all of these little gaps you see there, that's gonna be sealed with my, um, with my fiberglass panel on the outside, um, which I will have to figure out how I'm gonna do that as well, if I'm gonna do this, if I'm gonna turn this into a door, because, you know, I won't be able to do the entire, the entire outer panel one piece. It'll have to be that whole piece and then this piece somehow. Um, so it's gonna require a little, brainstorming and a little engineering and we'll make it happen but as far as this door goes this is a pretty much this is pretty much a wrap I think